Mm -hmm. Well, before, and I, I, we're going to get to the DC fight, I promise, but before UFC 202, you, you told me that you didn't think that the John Jones fight would happen. And I know that you got a little irritated that the questions continue to pop up about John, even though you were fighting Glover Teixeira. But I got to ask, because I remember when you and I spoke and you telling me that I just don't feel like that fight's going to happen anymore. Has your, has your mind changed? You know, it seems like John's is slightly in a better position than he was after UFC 200. Do you, have you came around and do you think that you, you guys will again share the octagon? Is that how you feel now? Uh, I, I still doubt it. You know what I mean? Um, I, got a, I got a title to fight for. Then I'll, I'll think about it. But, you know, whenever he gets out of his situation, then that's when I'll start thinking about it. You know what I mean? Um, mm -hmm. And I guess John was butthurt because Daniel and I were saying that, you know, he wasn't relevant right now you know what i'm saying to even be to be, even be talked about and stuff like that i mean but that's just a fact because he's not even in the picture so why even well, how is he relevant you know what i'm saying so like when yeah. i was going through my stuff i wasn't relevant and i can admit that because i wasn't in the picture you know so um you know he i guess he came back with some stuff on twitter or i don't know somewhere you know it, whatever he said i really didn't pay attention to it because it didn't mean anything to me, you know, so, but if he felt disrespected, that's on him. You know, I didn't disrespect him at all. I didn't say anything that nobody else said, hasn't said, you know what I mean? He was, he's not relevant right now. And, you know, whenever he gets back in the picture, then he'll be relevant. But until then, it's just the fact that he, he's just not relevant because he's not in the picture. So, I mean, you, you can get mad about it if you want. I mean, you put yourself in that situation, not me, not anybody else. You know what I'm saying? So that's just how it is. That's just how it works. Yeah, and unless I missed it, you didn't respond to him on Twitter. But one guy you have been going back and forth with on Twitter was was DC. You guys have been doing quite a bit of it, and uh, it seems like it's good natured and it's fun. I mean, what are you sitting on the couch watching TV, just just talking trash to, to DC from the couch, or is this like you get done with a hard training session? You feel like you got something to tell him? I mean. Give us a paint, paint the picture of what you're doing when you two start to go at it on social media. I'm chilling. I'm just relaxing. Then all of a sudden, I get a, <laughs> I get a notification or something from Twitter that you know a message from Daniel DC, and uh, I re I respond for sure. You know what I mean? Because um, that's what I'm fighting. And I'm never gonna not respond to somebody, you know, that I'm gonna fight. But um, yeah, it's it's fun to me to you know talk a little trash because. I don't really talk trash. You know, I could if I really really wanted to, but but um you know, that's just that's just not my thing. Well, if I'm if I was to talk trash, it would be real bad. <laughs> I got, my 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 mouth is kind of foul whenever, I, you know, I really get into it. So I I try not to go down that road. Well, one thing that he's promised in this, uh, I guess you call it trash talk, or the, the back and forth between you guys, is that he's not going to wrestle you at UFC 206. So I'm assuming that you're just, you know, preparing for a stand-up fight against DC because the guy said he's not going to wrestle you, right? Yeah, he said that. We'll see. Come on, let's, let's, let's be realistic here. You know what I'm saying? He, he's gonna, he has no choice but to try and wrestle me. I know he's going to strike with me too, but what's the chances of him really, you know, doing his thing when it comes to striking against me, you know, and I'm not saying that, you know, nothing can, he can't do anything to me, but I mean, at the end of the day, I know I'm a better striker than he is, and he knows that too. Yeah, I mean, it won't surprise me if if, uh, if DC looks to wrestle at least once at UFC 2. Oh, he will, I mean, I know he will at least, <laughs> at least not once, but like five times, I'm pretty sure he'll go for a takedown a couple of times. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I, I'm being a little bit sarcastic. I think wrestling is going to, to probably be his avenue of victory. And, you know, with the first time you guys fought, what, what was to you, and I know that you've described it as a grind, the way that he grinds, but what was mm. mo most challenging? Was it his level of wrestling or was it just the fact that he can do it consistently for five rounds at a time, or five minutes, five rounds? He can keep that pace on you during the whole time. Is it the pace or is it the high caliber of wrestling that's more challenging? Um, I don't know. For me, I, I just wasn't ready for that. You know what I mean? I was getting ready for a different type of fight. He's a good wrestler, and uh, he definitely put it on me with the wrestling the last time. That's something I wasn't ex I was expecting it, but I wasn't expecting it like he did it. You know what I mean? Um, 
you know, and I also I saw I gassed out whenever I, I dropped him and I tried to go in for the kill and uh pretty much just let it all let it all out, you know, emptied the tank and uh he took advantage of it and that's just what happened. So I'm definitely prepared for it this time. Well, hey, Anthony, I really appreciate the time. We're looking forward to the rematch. I guess my last question it would be, you know, we're taping this on October 25th. Uh, it's a Tuesday. You know, George St. Pierre was, was heavily rumored to be on this card at UFC 206. You know, now he's come out and said that he's a free agent, that he's, he's not going to fight in Toronto. Um, you know, Dan, Daniel said that he was disappointed in that because of the pay-per-view numbers. But what do you think? I mean, do you think that there's any chance that, uh, you know, that you won't be the main event at UFC 206 because uh, George will have his comeback fight in the main event? I mean, if George comes back, that would be awesome. You know, it would be awesome for, for you know, the sport. It would be awesome for Canada, um, it'd, you know, for the event overall. And for me, it would be like a dream come true because, I fought on a car with, I think, Chuck Liddell. fought on a car with Anderson Silva. Um, you know, I fought on a car with a lot of high-caliber fighters, a lot of legends, you know what I mean? So the only one I haven't fought on the same car with is GSP. So, I mean, if I get to fight on a car with him, you know, my life is almost complete. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, so um, if he gets to come back and out of his – I don't know what world he came from when he said he was his own. He was a free agent. I guess he should have just said I quit instead of just saying I was a free agent. Because you know the yeah. UFC is going to fight that for sure. You know what I mean? So, um, but if he comes back, it'll be great, man. I, I, I definitely look forward to it, and it does not bother me not to be the main event for any card. Well, you know what would be crazy about that, and I know we, we we talk about this basically every time you fight, and we probably will continue to do it just because it is this insane. But George St. Pierre used to be the guy that you were chasing as a welterweight. I mean, can you even imagine being that guy's size and challenging him to a 170-pound fight uh, after, <laughs> after, all <you've, laughs> after where you are now? I mean, it'll be surreal just watching you two stand next to each other, thinking at one point we were considering Anthony Johnson a welterweight title contender. Yeah, there's a, there's a picture floating around where him and I took a picture together. I think it was UFC 100. And um, I took a picture with him at his booth, and you can just see the size difference and everything else. And, uh, you know, you just it's, it's just crazy how it works, man. You know, you see a guy that, you know, a UFC. I don't Have they inducted him in the Hall of Fame yet? Uh, I don't think not yet. I, I think uh, after he retires, uh, that'd probably be a no-brainer. Uh, okay, but you know what I'm saying? Like, you see a future Hall of Famer and, you know, hopefully a future champion in the same picture. You know, they used to fight in the same weight class and now in different weight classes. I think I think that'd be pretty awesome. But uh I, I definitely just at the end of the day I do want to fight on the same card as him and it'd be pretty surreal if, if that happens. Yep. Well we'll see if it comes together. I mean I'm I'm not ready to say to say never. Even though they've started selling tickets up there and even though he said what what he said about being a free agent, I just feel like it makes so much sense that if there's usually when the, when things make that much sense, you know, the UFC finds a way to, to do it. But uh, we'll see. Either way, we're looking forward to your rematch against Daniel Cormier. Good luck in camp. Um, and again, man, we're looking forward to it. We'll see you up there in Toronto.